Conference with Michel Bruno, a SUNY Distinguished Professor of Civil, Structural and env Environmental Engineering, who joins us from Buffalo in New York. Uh, great to have you with us, Michel. So it's clear that older buildings are less efficient at withstanding tremors, but is it possible to build uh, a construction which can withstand earthquakes of the magnitude that we saw in Turkey? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that is the intent of modern building codes. I mean, to be fair, there are tens of thousands of structural engineers that have been trained in how to build earthquake resistant structures, building and infrastructure. And frankly, a lot of those are in Turkey, uh, just as good as anybody else in the world. Uh, the design philosophy that is prevalent worldwide is to design these buildings to provide life safety, in other words, to prevent collapse, to make sure that the gravity load carrying elements will not be damaged during the earthquake. And that has not been always the case in the past. So maybe I can give you a bit of an analogy. Uh, everybody have seen nowadays on the internet these crash tests that are done with cars, uh, where they run a car at full speed on a wall uh, to see if the uh, uh, impact will protect the occupants. Well, if you go back in time a few decades when they were doing these tests, I mean, walls would get damaged in all kinds of arbitrary way, and there was no way to uh, predict what would happen and if the occupants would be safe. And with new knowledge over the years, um, you know, it has been possible to design cars nowadays where you run them at 50 miles an hour on a brick wall or a concrete wall, and the front gets crumpled, but the occupants are safe and survive. So by this analogy, you can think a little bit the same way for buildings, where over the past decades, uh, instead of trying to design strong buildings, uh, where when the earthquake strike and it strikes to be uh, at a level above the strength that was provided in the building, and therefore the building sort of behaves in an unpredictable way and some can sometimes can lead to brittle collapses, um, the philosophy has been instead to control where the damage will be, to take a systems approach to the problem and to concentrate the uh, inelastic behavior or the, the demands of the earthquake that exceeds capacity in elements that do not at the same time carry gravity in a way that would therefore protect them from collapse. And that has been pretty much universal. Um, and in a sense, that's what's embedded in the modern building codes. So, can, so when building new buildings, obviously they will be built to a certain standard. What about existing buildings? Is it possible to retrofit them so that they can uh, withstand the, the, the ravages of a, of a tremor and, and keep occupants safer? So, yes, I mean, the, the, the technical problem is solvable, but what you have to think about, it's a chain of events, right? So there has to be first a will or recognizance of the uh, threat of the earthquake itself. I mean, a building is there to protect the occupants from the uh, things that can happen, such as earthquakes. So it, it is, the first thing is recognizing that maybe an older building does not have that. And while we, for a new building, we have implementation and most importantly, enforcement of building codes, the problem is that if an existing building has been there for decades, it may have been never designed to resist earthquakes or may have been designed to a code which at the time represented maybe the best knowledge of how to do earthquake resistant design, but is considered nowadays to be absolutely obsolete and not up to standard with current uh, thinking and current philosophy. So to do that now, uh, it's a very difficult societal problem because even though technically you can do it, uh, it's really hard to impose on people uh, the need to retrofit their building. I mean, the owners are uh, kings in their buildings, and uh, some uh, regions of the world have tried to implement uh, legislation to make it mandatory to upgrade and retrofit buildings, but it comes at a cost, and therefore there has to be a fiscally responsible policy that gets implemented that helps uh, overcome some of these upfront costs, and uh, essentially the option is to do that. Um, or to not do anything and wait for Mother Nature to take care of it later on. And that's really not the outcome that we would like to have. But that is a problem that we see worldwide. It's not unique to Turkey. There are old buildings never designed to resist earthquakes in most urban cities across the world. And, you know, unescapably, these are the buildings that will suffer more damage in future earthquakes. Indeed. Michelle, great to get your analysis there. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Michelle Bruno there.